Hello gamers, it's SoftKitty99 in the Battle for Azeroth and I think there's been a bit of confusion about these Arathi Highlands war fronts. As it launched on Wednesday, if you have a 120 character who already has opened up world quests, then you should have had a quest pop up for you to go and speak to your faction's recruitment officer. For the Alliance, this person is Ralston Khan and he can be found by a war table and there's a great big alliance banner above his head and he is right opposite the boat that you go to for the war campaign. Now, I can't show the, you the horde position because I don't have a person at that level yet. I haven't had the chance to level my hordes. But I would imagine that your recruitment officer and the war table will again be somewhere very close to your war campaign boat because that would just make so much more sense. So that will probably be in the harbour in both factions. If you click on the war table, here it says the Alliance holds Stromgard Keep and controls the Rathi Highlands. SI7 spies report the Horde is contributing to their own war effort in Arathi. As the war fronts launched, the Alliance have been given control of Arathi Highlands so that we can do the questing in the area at the moment. Meanwhile, the Horde are now in the contribution phase, so in your dock area there will be a whole load of people offering you profession quests for turning to give you reputation. This bar that is here will slowly advance even if people are not making contributions because Blizzard has said that it will be time gated to give the opposing faction a chance to do all the quests and kill the rares while they control Rathi Highlands. At this point it's not 100% certain how much contribution to this bar is made by the factions actually turning in rewards. We're still waiting for a little bit more clarification on that. But you can't push it beyond a certain time frame in order to give the opposing faction a chance to complete all the quests. Once this bar does get to 100% the Horde will have the first chance to actually do the Warfront Battlegrounds which are not truly PvP, they're PvE, because it will be the faction, in this case the Horde, fighting NPCs of the Alliance in order to control Arathi Highlands. So once it gets to 100%, if you go to your Warfront table, here you can see there's a Join Queue button which is currently greyed out. So when the Horde contributions get to 100%, the Horde will be able to click the button and join the queue. After the Horde have completed the Battlefront scenarios, then it will become the Alliance's time to have the bar to contribute up to, and then when the Alliance get it to 100%, then we'll be able to queue for the Battlefront, War Ground, whatever. I'm not 100% sure what to call it. Uh, let's call it the Warfront Battleground. Uh, once you complete the actual battleground itself you will get a cache which has a chance to give you a 340 item level piece of gear. You can repeat the war fronts for uh, extra chances at more gear so if you're missing a few pieces that might be a good way to get a few pieces by repeating the war fronts over and over until you get them. When your faction controls the war fronts you will then be able to do some quests in the zone and there are lots of rares to kill. These rares can drop gear at item level 340. They can also drop mounts, pets, little useful items that can summon elementals to fight for you for 10 minutes and toys. Now at the very beginning once you get that pop-up quest to go speak to your recruitment officer you come down to the docks, speak to them and they say that Arathi Highlands is currently potentially under attack and they ask you to go and visit it. And they will tell you to go and speak to a portal master. For the Alliance, this person is just off to the right and her name is Yuvera Dornwing and she will open a portal for you to go to your faction's base. For the Alliance, that's Stromgard, of course. Once you go through the portal, there will be a familiarize yourself with the area quest. It will ask you to go and speak to two people and then it will ask you to go and speak to the flight master and the flight master will give you a little flight around 
near your base and point out various features that will be important once you come to actually do the battleground because they'll basically point out to you where the mine is, where the lumber mill is, where the overlook area is and these are going to be key areas for when you're doing the battlefront scenario. Once you've done that little search and discover where everything is quest, you'll then be asked to come back and speak to your recruitment officer in Zoldazar or in Boralus and once you speak to them that will give you a pop-up saying that you now have the ability to queue for the war fronts. So you have to do that as a little pre-quest before you will be able to click that join queue button. So it's a good time to get that done now whether you're Alliance or Horde on any character that is available to do that on. Once you've done that, if you pop back through the portal, if you are Alliance this is because Alliance currently own it and this will also work when the Horde control it later, you will find that there are five or six quests that are available for you to complete. One of those quests will give you a cache which will contain an item level 340 piece of gear again. These things can possibly Warforge and Titanforge so you can get higher item levels. If you go out and do those quests they're basically kill quests. They're uh, kill the Horde, kill the Ogres, kill the Witherbark, kill the Syndicate. And if you go out and do all of those quests then one of them, as I said, will drop a cache which can have an item level 340 piece on it. A couple of them will give you Azerite and another couple of them will give you the war resources. So it, it's a nice little, fairly quick way to get a chunk of resources and to get yourself a piece of gear. These quests can only be done once while your faction holds the war fronts. They are not daily repeatables. Also, there are a whole slew of rare spawns out in Arathi Highlands. As I said, these can drop mounts, toys, pets, uh, little items that can uh, summon a, an elemental that will fight for you as a little companion pet for 10 minutes. And the rares can also drop item level 340 gear. You can kill and loot these once per week. Uh, you can kill them multiple times, of course, but you can only get the loot the first time you kill them. So. Uh, continuing is only worth doing so if you have friends that need help. I'm going to put up another video which will show you all the mounts, pets and toys that are available in Arathi Highlands. And there's one more thing that comes up. There is a world boss that is up. It is a great big mechanical tank that you can fight. You need a full raid group to kill it. There is a horde version and an alliance version. And these can drop toys, there's an Alliance version and a Horde version and it can also drop item level 370 gear so it's definitely well worth killing once every time the battleground is up. Also be aware that the opposing faction, in this case the Horde because the Alliance own it, the Horde can actually still come and kill all the rare spawns, there are just no quests for you and it appears that you might be forced to have your PvP on while you're in Arathi even if you're on a PvE server. We're not sure if this is a currently a bug or if this is actually meant to be but you can still come and kill everything while the opposing faction own it so that gives you an extra chance at the loot. I hope that you found this helpful and that this has helped to explain some of the things that people are having a little bit of confusion about Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. From Softkitty99, goodbye and happy gaming!